What's going on everybody, Shane here, and I've got a slightly different kind of video than usual for you today. So, there are very few things in the world that I love more than cheap technology, cheap gadgets, cheap gear. It's the greatest. Things that are, are, are cheap and who knows where they came from and who made them, but they're cool and they do a job well and it's my favorite thing. So that is exactly what I've got for you here today. I bought something off of Amazon that's, I'm sure it's not a new thing, but it's new to me, so whatever. It is a controller, and the problem that it is going to solve, hopefully for me, is a problem related to the NVIDIA Shield TV that I use. So for those that don't know, the NVIDIA Shield TV is an Android-powered uh, set-top box. I use it to stream TV through Philo TV, I use Netflix, Hulu, um, etc, etc, ESPN, whatever. That's how I watch TV. And it's got this remote. And this remote is fine. You control the volume with this capacitive region. You, you just sort of do this, and the volume is supposed to change. And um, Problems I have with it are largely around that, because it just doesn't work a lot of the time, and a lot of time you'll be sitting there doing this, and nothing's happening, and then suddenly the volume goes up and down 15 times, and it's just, it, most of the time it's fine. It, it's all you need, it's fine, it's, it's small, but that really irritates me. And then another problem is that anytime I'm using anything where I have to log in and type, is a colossal pain in the ass. So much so that I actually, at one point, hooked up a USB keyboard, a wireless keyboard, and I would just trackpad around because a cursor appears on the screen. I was just using that for a little bit, but that's just so unwieldy and big and awful. Not a good solution. So that brings me to this. Just got this in the mail. And I'm going to open this up. I'm going to try something a little bit weird here. Let me know what you think. But this is, you know, hey, a little, 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 dual, uh, little dual camera action. Let me shrink my second self here a little bit more. Um, so I'm going to open this thing up here live. And I'm going to give you my impressions on it and tell you what I think. And go from there. So this is it here. It is a controller that has on the front, it's got a normal set of buttons but the magic is on the rear one thing i don't like about it is that the the brand name here re is that how i'm supposed to pronounce that like the nintendo re like is that i mean i could make some racially insensitive jokes that i won't make i won't make them so well oh, i'm dropping things push this here this is the re real <laughs> <laughs> so I'm seeing here that RE stands for Real Internet Idea. Thanks. Dear distinguished customer, RE is a well-known and professional brand of computer peripherals. Not sure that that's accurate. Let's, let's, um, instruction manual. Who needs that? Let's get that out of the way. Let's get into the, the meat and potatoes here. So this is the controller. And it's pretty beefy. Comparatively, it's really beefy. Here's where the cool thing is, though. That is a full QWERTY keyboard on the back side of this thing. Pretty interesting. Now, the first thing that comes to mind here is... How do I put batteries into this? Wait. Okay. Okay. So, two compartments, and it is wireless USB. It's got a little dongle that hides away in there. That's pretty cool. Let's grab some batteries. Alright, so the batteries are in. We've got a blinking blue LED. One immediate cool thing. It's backlit! Come on! Come on! And I feel like... I feel like I can type pretty well on that. It's actually kind of clicky. Not bad. Full array of buttons. You've got home, menu, you've got the voice button there. So that's pretty cool. It feels pretty good. Going to need some further testing, but here's what's really crazy. This thing is like $12. So I mean, like if it's complete garbage, 
Is that really that big of a deal? All right, so I've got this thing plugged in, and immediately upon plugging it in, I've discovered something quite weird. You may see a cursor moving around my screen. Let me show you something here. Um, it's, uh, this re is basically a remote. So, I'm not sure what to make of that. The buttons do, in fact, work. But I've got this cursor on the screen. So let me figure out here in the old instruction manual, is there a way cursor on off? Okay, so this button here should be, wow, okay, cursor on and off. Look at that. This thing might be greater than I thought it was. Let's try the voice search first. What should I search for? Let's do this. I've pressed the voice button and nothing has happened. I'm going to try it again. Nothing. Press and hold. Nothing. Okay. Voice search might be a dud. Let's try manually activating it. Open YouTube. Okay, so it looks like that's not going to work. So let's back out of that. What's Where's the back button? There's that. Okay. So voice search, no go. Volume does work. Okay, let's try type to search, and I'm gonna now try the keyboard. And the keyboard totally works. Fantastic, you even have a, a dedicated delete or backspace key, arrow keys, that's pretty slick. You've got number keys on the front, they do in fact work. Turn down the volume on my own video. Play pause on the front does in fact work. Skip does in fact work in YouTube. Pretty cool. Guys, I, you know what? This is, uh, this is not bad. This is not bad. I am pretty impressed. All things withstanding, voice search does not seem to work. Maybe I can figure something out to make that work, but you know what? Hey, this is pretty cool. All in all, I'm pretty impressed with this thing for what I spent for it. I mean, the mic doesn't seem to be working, but whatever. Everything else does. The keyboard works. It's backlit. Use it in the dark if that's what you're into. Pretty cool, actually. So until next time, if you see any cool gadgets, point them out to me. I'll try them. See what I think. Until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.